Welcome, welcome everyone to the GDQ Hotfix on this wonderful Monday evening. Uh, I am Helix, welcome to Bargain Bin, where every game is $20 or less. Uh, I am not Midnight Vesper, I am filling in for Midnight Vesper today, uh, unfortunately not able to make it, but thank you as always to Midnight Vesper for getting this show together. This will be the same Bargain Bin you know and love, just with me at the helm today. Uh, but speaking of, let's get right into it. I am here with Kefka14, take it away. All right. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me back. Uh, you all last saw me for Out of Bounds roughly a month ago doing some Nightmare Creatures. Today we're doing MacBat 64, Journey of a Nice Chap. Fantastic game. Highly recommend. But let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Uh, the timer begins when I select the first level here. So we'll start in three, two, one, go. All right, so MacBat 64 is an indie game made by Seattro Games, a developer named Marcus Horn. And most of Marcus's games, pretty much all of them, in fact, are meaning to harken back into kind of the uh, Rareware titles on the N64. Uh, and uh, to be honest, he does a fantastic job of achieving this with the graphical style alone. Uh, we're already done with the first level, by the way. Uh, the, the game's quite short. Uh, we're going to be doing 100% new release by the way, today. So you are going to get to see every single level in the game, including the bonus levels. We're going to be collecting all the things that we need to collect as well. So, good stuff. Going into the second level here, though, Birdie Beach. Uh, this level has a pretty difficult skip that is frame perfect. Uh, let's see what, see what happens here. I got it first try. Wow. Uh, I, I really didn't expect that, but uh, we, we take those. Uh, you'll notice I also collected an object. That is a Kiwi statue. There are a total of four of those that we need to collect in order to hit the 100% requirement. And what it's going to do is it's going to unlock uh, something for us called the Kiwi Wing towards the end of the run. It gives us infinite flight. And uh, speaking of that, I guess I should talk a little bit about how that works. You'll notice when I fly here, uh, you know, Mac Battle flap his wings. We have a limited amount of those before we can no longer flap anymore. Once we get the Kiwi Wing, that'll be infinite. Coming into Tulsar Forest, though, uh, and then into the dungeon here. Starting off, we had to get a shield, a sword, and a hat in order to access this uh, sort of dungeon. And there is a skip in this room here that you can do, but it could very easily cost the entire run. So I've elected to bypass it for the sake of safety and showing the game off. Plus, you'll get to see a little bit more of the game by it not showing it off. It doesn't save too much time anyway, maybe like 10 seconds or something. We're going to be grabbing the second Kiwi statue right over here. And then finishing the level. But yeah, uh, as mentioned, this is Bargain Bin. All the games on this are $20 or less, and including this game. Uh, on the Switch store, this game is a whopping $1.99. Uh, so if you're looking for a cheap, fun game to speedrun, look no further. But we're going to take a little detour here, and we're going to talk to this monkey who is voiced by Grant Kirkhope, the composer for the uh, Banjo games in DK64. Check it out. Pretty good stuff. Uh, he has three different. Okay, yeah. He has three different text boxes, and they're randomly generated. I was hoping I, I could show off at least two of them, uh, just for the sake of, you know, showing it off a little bit. So it's pretty cool that uh, Grant Kirkhope did that. Seemed a slightly interesting thing to at least demonstrate. Now we're coming into Bright Islands. Uh, this is one of two levels in the game. They're kind of like a, in a 2.5D perspective. Sort of harkening back to Kirby 64. Uh, this level does have a pretty difficult skip at the end. At least I've personally always found it difficult. Some other runners don't. Let's see what happens. Now I am playing on the Switch, uh, and the game was released on PC and Xbox. Uh, the Xbox uh, Marketplace. I don't know what it's called. I'm not an Xbox user, really. All right, we got the skip at the end, even. Fantastic. Uh, but I know that on PC, it's also $1.99, but I think on Xbox, it's released as a part of, like, a Seattro game collection sort of thing. And I looked up the price of that before doing this, and I think it's $10. Uh, so I highly recommend doing that. Anyway, coming into this level here, this is Tubular City. One of the longer levels in the game. Uh, starting off, our goal here is to collect some coins, and we need coins in order to buy a game to give to that monkey right there, sitting next to that tree. But the whoop, the main purpose of 
this level is to collect a couple batteries so we can get in a car and uh, leave the level, essentially. In order to get some of our batteries, we've got to play some arcade games. Uh, we got really weird RNG on that one, so that's fun. This arcade game here is quite simple. We just got to eat the little fruits on the ground like so. And then we buy the game with the coins, give it to the bunkie, get the battery. And then we go get the last battery on this disco floor. Now, this disco floor is randomly generated, so we'll see what kind of pattern we get here. If I touch one of the red squares, it starts back over from scratch, which is obviously not good. All right, pretty good. And then we get to come up to probably one of my favorite parts of the run, because you get to just not play the game for a second, which is always fun. Check this out. On the D-pad, I'm going to go... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And then it's just an auto-scroller. Uh, it's funny because the game clearly makes you think that you need to be swerving back and forth to avoid these oil drums. But, yeah, if you just get in the right position, you could just zoom on through without any regard for anything. Which is, you know, pretty fun. And then, you know... Like Back to the Future, we reach 88 miles per hour or whatever have you, and we zoom on out and beat the level. Now we're going to be coming into what most runners of this game consider to be the worst level, uh, including myself, Mac Race. Uh, <laughs> it's basically just a big auto-scroller that you can lose time in. It is the longest level in the game, by far, uh, and it just it's pretty awful, <laughs> if I'm being real. That being said, uh, I mean, it's, it's good it's good casual fun, but for a speedrun, not really the best level uh, by any means. You can cut some corners like you saw me do there, and we're going to be grabbing some boosts, which are going to allow us to go a tad faster. Uh, the, the, one of the boosts you can get here is you can see we're like a giant octopus or squid thing. I guess it's meant to be kind of like the octopus boss in Diddy Kong Racing. Uh, I'm, I'm not really sure exactly what Marcus was going for here, but... Uh, that, that seems accurate, I suppose. But yeah, you just do four laps of this, and uh, the checkpoints are pretty strict, actually. Uh, those of you who might be familiar with how some of the Mario Kart games work, in order for laps to count, you have to hit certain checkpoints across the uh, track, and this is no different, except for in this game, for some reason, they're really strict. I, I don't know why. <laughs> uh, this level's right for potential skips in my opinion but despite the research of the community we haven't really found any any good candidates for that so we had a really good mac race here uh i didn't really get stopped by any corners which is good sometimes get, getting between that little oil slick in the grass and not getting slowed down is somewhat of a challenge but yeah we're getting into the back half of the regular levels in the game, and as I mentioned earlier, this is 100%, so we are going to be seeing all the bonus levels, but it's more specifically we're doing the 100% new release category, which uh, does mean that we do have one additional level compared to the PC version of the game. Anyway, next we're going into Moody Mansion. Uh, this level normally has you go through and you have to figure out a correct order to push some switches in, and we grabbed our third key statue. I ran into an enemy there, which warped us back to the beginning. Since we already know the order of these switches, though, we can avoid doing any of the puzzles in the level and just simply hit the switches. And boom, activate the end of the level. Very very quick level. Very fun level to speedrun, too, if you like really short, fast, sort of individual level segments. And the game does have an individual level board as well. So we're coming into the second, or the rather the last level in the bulk of the main levels in the game watery factory watery factory is pretty involved actually uh the first thing we got to do is we got to grab that balloon then we're going to fly up here onto the edge of the level and we're going to come up here and grab this screw now the object of this level is to collect five screws so we can take them to a guy to fix his submarine luckily for us uh that's a pretty quick task the first screw i grabbed you're normally supposed to bounce on like a uh sort of like a pool floaty duck thing you have to bring the duck food but you can skip doing all that by flying up onto the edge of the level like we did. And we grabbed the last Kiwi statue back there. And the last screw, so we're going to take it to the submarine guy. And for some reason, he gives us a blowgun for doing this. Uh, and then we shoot this thing in the face three times. And it has a really creepy face. This is a very bizarre level. I, I've, 
I, I've always thought that this level sort of just feels out of place, but there are some other kind of creepy levels in the game as well. And then we're going to the final boss. Uh, now, it is worth mentioning that the final boss is not when this run ends, because we are going to be doing the bonus level as well, which is a part of the 100% requirement. But coming into the final boss here, uh, there is a fairly interesting way to skip this in the any percent and new game plus categories where you just fly out of bounds and there's an end trigger where the boss is like hey where are you going why are you leaving but uh we're, in order to unlock the bonus book we can't actually do that we have to beat the boss the regular way sort of after you do phase one you basically have to just shoot the boss Blow gun the spawns, but we're just gonna oh, give us just a moment, everyone. We will be right back. Sorry about that everyone, but I have great news. Bargain Bin is back. Macbeth is back. Kefka, as you were. Alright, yes, sorry for that. Some minor technical difficulties. Where we last left off, we were at the final boss, and uh, we were just about to finish up the fight, so let's go ahead and do that now. Oh, well, uh... I accidentally hit back to the title screen. That's... That's terrible. <laughs> okay. So... I guess we just get to see the final boss again. That'll be fun. Luckily, I actually did a practice run. Uh, just to, just in case something like that right there happened, and I did the final boss twice, and still came under estimate, so we should be good. Where we left off, though... <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Where we left off, though... We were at the final boss. The final boss has three phases. Uh, phase one, you... Simply avoid its hands, and then you grab a blowgun. And as I mentioned earlier, the game has a fail safe, so if, if you just sit too long, the game gives you another blowgun, and you can abuse that to skip phase two of the fight entirely. It's pretty cool. Then we go into phase three, which is as simple as pushing a button. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and go push that button now, which will finish the main bulk of the game. And we will have to watch through the credits to unlock the bonus book. Nice Wilhelm scream here, though. Here we go. Hilarious. All right. So now we got to watch the credits to unlock the bonus book. Uh, this is as good of a time as any to give a shameless plug to the MacBat community. Wonderful folks. Uh, that also being said, just recently, the Xbox version of the game was added to the leaderboard and there are no times on it. So if you want your free cheap world records, get in there, guys. Get in there. The game is beckoning to you. That being said, though, you can see, you know, it's, uh, like I said, it's an indie game, so it's a pretty short credits. Also, Grant Kirkhope, again, voicing a monkey. Funny stuff. It's the only NPC in the game with any dialogue, which is pretty interesting. Uh, <laughs> it, this, this game's pretty wacky. Uh, all of the Seattro games are, and they're all really great, you know, short, cheap games that you can speedrun. Uh, there's Beanie, there's the Tori series, uh, there's Kiwi and Super Kiwi. Really good stuff. I've personally been a fan of them at least. But anyway, as you'll see. Yeah, I've, I've heard great things about all of those. Oh, games. they're fantastic. So you can see we got the bonus book. Enjoy a bit of rather weird bonus material. There are five bonus levels. Uh, the first one here has a very, very, very difficult skip in it that we're not going to be doing. <laughs> uh, where you ha fly over the top of the level. Uh, we like to call this level Saws for obvious reasons. And if you touch one of the saws, you don't get a game over or anything, but it just warps you back to a previous checkpoint. So we're going to try to avoid doing that. We may end up bumping into a couple a little later in the stage. Uh, but overall, it's it's not a huge, huge deal if that happens. Let's see if we can get through it safely here. All right, cool. We made it through without getting bump, bumping into any, which is really nice. Again, though, there is a really, really difficult skip that's uh, it's exclusive, actually, to the Switch 
and Xbox versions where you just fly over the top of a level. It's very precise. I messed with it last night actually for a few hours and wasn't able to really get it any more consistent. <laughs> now we're coming into the second of five bonus levels. This is one we call Spooky House. It's like a Japanese style haunted house. This is my favorite level in the game uh, for speedrunning. I've grinded this IL a lot for whatever reason. I just, I don't know, something about it. I think it's because there's no jumping. It's just good movement. Something about that really, really, really speaks to my soul. Yeah, we're already done with that level. Super fast. Then we're coming into the third bonus level, uh, and there's only three left, including this one. And this one is where we're going to be getting the Kiwi Wing, which is what we can, we're getting all those Kiwi statues for earlier in the run. Uh, and what it does, it says here, you got the wings of a Kiwi. They will let you jump unlimited times. Now you can even jump across the level borders and explore the unexplorable. So as that indicates, we now have infinite flaps. We can fly as much as we want. And it's worth mentioning that you can actually uh, do New Game Plus runs of this game where you have that from the get-go, which trivializes a lot of things in the game. Now we're on to the second to last level, uh, the obligatory Christmas stage. The object here is to collect 80 ornaments. Uh, that may sound like a ton, but we're going to be doing it really, really quickly. It was a pretty good route that uh, the community's come up with. I've always been suspicious that a better route exists, but despite testing for about two years, I've not found it. Go down through this little house here. See, we already have 50 of them. It goes, super, it goes by super quick. We grab these, the one on, on top of the house. The ones on top of these houses and these last five. And then the end trigger appears inside of the star on the tree, just like Freeze Z Peak with Banjo Kazooie. Yeah, I definitely recommend these games uh, in general, and especially this one if you're fans of like Banjo Kazooie, DK64. Really good stuff. But here we are, already at the end of the run for the final level, Space. Now, Space is exclusive to the Switch and Xbox versions of the game. And this level's kind of interesting. I've got a little bit of an attachment to this one. Because about two months ago, hit or miss, I found a skip that cut the level in half. Uh, we already went out of bounds and skipped most of it, but I figured out if you fly over here right at the start, you can fly out of bounds early and then fly straight to the end trigger, more or less. And if you just fly on down here, you can see there's a kind of monster in a sort of laboratory down here. And that's the Mecha Melon. And uh, then you just got to escape. Kind of like a Super Metroid escape sequence. Time's coming up very, very shortly, by the way. As soon as I touch this spaceship, that'll be time on the run. So we're right here. We can just fly back up into bounds. And time. Yeah. Well, that was ridiculous. <laughs> still well underestimated as well, despite the brief. I'm glad it was still Thank underestimated. So much for that. That I'm not awesome. really sure what happened there, but I'm glad it only lasted, you know, a brief moment. We were able to get back on track, uh, but but yeah, I, I want to say again, thanks for having me. Thanks for letting me show this off. Uh, one little personal note, I submitted this to SGDQ last year and it did get in, but I was unable to attend. So I'm really happy to get to actually show this game off on, you know, some sort of GDQ stage. Uh, this game means a lot to me. So thanks guys, seriously. That's awesome, yeah. congrats. Um... Any last plugs or anything? Uh, yeah, share? just I just want to give a good shout out to the MacBat community. And again, I wanted to you know say this is bargain bin. This game's really cheap. If some of you out there are looking for a cheap and fun game to speed run that's you know got some nostalgic elements to it for sure. I definitely recommend this game or any of the Seattro games. So shout out to Marcus over at Seattro. He's a really nice guy. He tends to interact with the you know the communities of his games a little bit as well. So yeah, again, thanks. A lot of fun. Yeah. I was actually thinking, like, at two bucks, I'm going to have to go pick this oh, up Oh, it's myself. definitely worth two dollars. Even fun. if you just casually play through it, like, definitely worth two bucks. Yeah, I mean, hey, we call this Bargain Man, and that's one heck of a absolutely. bargain. Absolutely. Um, yeah, uh, that was an absolutely amazing run. Uh, if any of you missed it, you know, maybe you're just joining us, um, definitely go and check out 
the Hotfix VODs on youtube.com slash gamesdonequick. We've got all the other Hotfix shows on there as well. And for those of you watching on YouTube, thank you very much for tuning in. Be sure to press the like button on the video and subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to watch our shows live, which you absolutely should, go to twitch.tv slash gamesdonequick. In the meantime, we're going to go get set up for the next run. We will be right back. Thank you again, Gafka. That was thank amazing. You.